Next, the XG5000 program will be used to set the communication settings for exchanging data between XGT PLCs. PLC of station number 1 will be operated as master, and PLC of station number 3 will be operated as slave. These two PLCs use the RS422 communication method and will be configured as a system that transmits or receives data using XGT protocol. In addition, for communication setting, data bit is 8 bits, stop bit is 1 bit, parity bit is not used, and communication speed is set to 115,200 BPS. At this time, the master sends a request message to the slave first, and the slave performs read-write operations as requested by the master, and then sends a response message to master. In this example, two messages are exchanged between PLCs. First, if the master sends read request to the slave, the slave reads and sends the two-word data of D10, D11, and the master writes received data to memory of D0, D1. When the master sends a write request, the master reads four words of M10 to M13, and sends these data to the slaves R10 to R13. We will use the channel number 2 of master module and channel number 1 of slave module for communication example. Next, we will check the setting order of each operation mode. First of all, in the case of server that uses the XGT protocol, it is relatively easy to set. After setting the module station number, communication type, speed, data format, etc., then download XG5000 program and basic setting. If the basic parameters are changed, the communication module must be reset and updated. Therefore, if you reset PLC or reset individual communication module, XGT server setting is completed. Next, let's look at the setting procedure of the master using the XGT client. First of all, it is the same as the previous XGT server setting. As P2P communication method is used, add P2P to the module. When P2P is added, P2P channels and P2P blocks are created, set in the order of channel and block. After setting communication driver setting in P2P channel, user sets the message to be sent to the server in the P2P block setting. When the setting is completed, download that to PLC, and the module needs to be reset to apply the changes. Finally, to start actual communication, you need to activate the added P2P by doing service enable. Communication starts at this point. Let's start XGT server setting after I.O. synchronization. If you see the I.O. parameter of XG5000, you can see the modules in your system. XGT server in this example uses XGL C42B, which is in base number 0 and slot number 1. Double-click the communication module to set the basic parameter of CNET. Since XGT server uses channel 1, we will set channel 1 as RS422 and communication speed as 115,200 BPS. Next, we will activate the terminating resistors on both PLCs and set the station number to 3. Operation mode should be set to XGT server. Next, we will move on to the Advanced Settings tab. Set data bit to 8 bit, stop bit to 1 bit, and parity bit to none. And then the communication setting is finished. Write a simple program to check the transmitted received data. First of all, write a program that reads D10 to T11 address using increase or move instruction and transmit it to the master.
Next, the saving data stored in R0 to R3 of master is moved by using group move instruction. This is a sample program, so you can write a program according to the needs of the user. Click online write button in XG5000 to download the basic parameter and program to the PLC. At this time, if program is checked in download tab, please download the program, paying attention to stopping of PLC operation. To apply the changed basic setting parameters, click online, reset clear, individual communication module reset to reset module. Since the module in base 0 slot 1 is going to be reset, select and reset that module. When this process is completed, it operates with the changed basic setting, and the setting for XGT server is completed. Next, we will explain the setting of the client operation using XGT protocol. Click the I.O. parameter in XG5000 to check if the communication module is properly registered. We will use channel number 2 of XGL C42B in base number 0 and slot number 1. And then, we will set the communication module as XGT client. Double-click the XGL C42B in the project tab of XG5000. Channel number 1 and number 2 can be set separately, and there are two tabs in basic setting tab. In this example, channel 2 is used, so change the channel 2 communication parameters. It starts by changing the bode rate to 115,200 BPS and communication type to RS-422. Since the master PLC is installed at the end, we will activate the terminating resistance and set the station number of the master PLC to 1. Operation mode is also important. PLC operates as XGT client. PLC operation setting of basic parameter should be P2P. And then, go to the advanced setting to set the data bit, stop bit, and parity bit. These values need to be the same as the XGT server. After setting up to this point, basic setting of XGT client is completed. Let's start configuring P2P. P2P must be added when setting the client. Right-click the module and add P2P. Add P2P by selecting an unassigned P2P number between P2P1 to P2P8. After adding P2P, you can select P2P channel, P2P block, and user frame definition. First, Double-click the P2P channel. Since RS-422 of channel number 2 will be used in P2P channel tab, set P2P driver as XGT client. After P2P channel setting, move to P2P block setting. On the P2P block settings tab, sending receiving messages can be written in table format. You can write up to 64 indices per P2P. Each index contains one message. In this example, we will write one read request index and one write request index. When setting index 0, the first part of the P2P block, the channel, must be set up first. If the channel is set to number 2, the setting driver is loaded. The driver set here is the communication driver set in the P2P channel. Also, P2P channel, read and write request can be selected. At index 0, the master makes a read request to the slave, so select read function. Next, we will set the conditional flag. Conditional flag in P2P communication is very important as a communication event occurs when the bit status of the conditional flag turns on, 0 to 1. Let's say M0 is the conditional flag. 
and the communication message is transmitted only when M0 bit, conditional flag, changes from 0 to 1. Counter, communication flag, or bit shift commands are generally used as a conditional flag. And you can choose a system flag for a conditional flag as well. For example, if F93 bit, one second flag, device in XGK is applied as the conditional flag, its communication message will be transmitted at every second. As mentioned before, you could use system flags to trigger communication, but F99-bit device in XGK is not a proper conditional flag, as it is always on bit and does not change from 0 to 1. Here, we will apply F93, one second clock flag, to send a communication message with one second period to read two word data. Select continuous in command type, two byte in data type, and key in two in data size to read two word data. When data type is two byte, data size should be set to two for expressing two words. And enter three for destination station number. You will find read area and save area in setting. The memory assignment of a read request is as follows. Read area is the memory of a destination station and save area is my PLC memory. Here, we are going to read two word data from D10 of PLC station number three and save them in memory from D0 of my PLC. Key in D10 in read area and D0 in save area. Now index zero is completed. Let's make a write request in index one. Selecting two in channel, XGT client driver will appear in driver setting. Select write in P2P function and enter F93 bit, one second clock flag, in conditional flag. We will write forward data to target station three. Select continuous in command type, two byte in data type, and enter four in data size, and three in destination station number. In case of a write request, data transfers from my PLC area to the target station memory. Different from index zero setting, read area is the memory of a destination station, and save area is my PLC memory. Next, let's take a look at the program with move and add instructions. After programming, download the program to the PLC selecting online right. Make sure network parameter, basic settings and P2P EIP is selected. To apply the updated communication module setting, you are supposed to click Reset PLC or Reset Individual Module. Reset Individual Module will reset the selected communication module when PLC runs. The next step is to enable P2P communication. Select Online, Communication Module Setting and Diagnosis, Enable Link Services and tick off the P2P number to enable. Now XGT client setting is completed. Now let's find out the communication status. Select online, communication module setting and diagnosis, system diagnosis. Right click on the module to find the communication status and select status by service. As P2P communication is applied, choose P2P service tab and read will show you service time and error count. You can monitor all the frames in and out of CNET module. Right click on CNET module and select frame monitor. 
Now channel 2 is running. Set the channel 2 to monitor and click start. And you will find the sending receiving frames. That is the end of CNET communication with XGT protocol. Thank you for watching.